Hey, Roxy's thinking it'd be kind of fun to live in the jungle and ride on your mother's back and play tag with your sister, huh? Is that what you're thinking? Yeah. That would be kind of fun. Well, we'll find out what happens in this really important, kind of very sad chapter. I know. It's supposed to be a happy animal book, right? Well, yeah. Nope, it's not the way it is. <clears throat> so... We had just read the last time it was for a while a perfect life and that kind of sets us up to know that something's going to change because it was just for a while so this subtitle on this next page is called the end hmm one day a still day when the hot air hummed the humans came The next subtitle is called Vine. After they captured my sister and me, they put us in a cramped dark crate that smelled of urine and fear. Somehow I knew that in order to live, I had to let my old life die. But my sister could not let go of our home. It held her like a vine stretching across the miles, comforting, strangling. We were still in our crate when she looked at me without seeing. Wow, do you hear that? We were still in our crate when she looked at me without seeing. And I knew that the vine had finally snapped. Wow talk about that one for a while. Yikes. Next subtitle is called The Temporary Human. It was Mac who pried open that crate. Mac who bought me and Mac who raised me like a human baby. I wore diapers, I drank from a bottle, I slept in human beds, sat in human chairs, listened while human words swarmed around me like angry bees. Mac had a wife back then. Helen was quick to laugh, but quick to anger too, especially when I broke something which was often. Here is what I broke while I lived with Mac and Helen. One crib, 46 glasses, seven lamps, <laughs> one couch, three shower curtains, three shower curtain rods. <laughs> One blender, one TV, one radio, three toes. And in parentheses, it's my own. Hmm. I broke the blender when I squeezed three tubes of toothpaste and a bottle of glue into it. I broke my toes attempting to swim from swing from a lamp fixture on the ceiling. I broke 46 glasses. Well, turns out there are many ways to break a glass. Every weekend, Mac and Helen took me in their convertible to a fast food restaurant where they ordered me french fries and a strawberry shake. Mac loved to see the expression on the cashier's face when he drove up and said, Could I have some extra ketchup for my kid? I went to baseball games, to the grocery store, to a movie theater, even to a circus. They didn't have a gorilla. I rode a little motorbike and blew out candles on my birthday cake. My life as a human was a glamorous one, although my parents' traditional sorts would not have approved. Hmm. Next subtitle is called Hunger. Hmm. In my new life as a human, I was well tended. I ate leaves, lettuce leaves with Thousand Island dressing and caramel apples and popcorn with butter. My My belly ballooned. But hunger, like food, comes in many shapes and colors. And at night, lying alone in my poo pajamas, I felt hungry for the skilled touch of a grooming friend, for the cheerful grunts of a play fight, and for the easy safety of my nearby troop foraging through the shadows. Remember what happened to Tag, I told myself, don't think about the jungle. 
Still sometimes I lay awake wishing for the warmth of another one just like me, asleep in a night nest of tender prayer plant leaves. I liked having sips of soda poured into my mouth like a bubbling waterfall. But every now and then I long for a tender stalk of arrowroot to feel the tease of a mango just out of reach. Hmm. Next subtitle is called Still Life. One day, Helen came home with something large and flat wrapped in brown paper. Look what I brought, bought today, she said excitedly as she tore off the paper. A painting to go over the living room couch. Fruit in a bowl, Max said with a shrug. Big deal. This is fine art. It's called still life, Helen explained, and I think it's lovely. I dashed over to, the, to examine the painting, marveling at all of the colors and shapes. See, said Max's wife, Ivan likes it. Ivan likes to roll up poop and throw it at squirrels, <laughs> Max said. I couldn't take my eye, eyes off the apples and bananas and the grapes in the picture. They looked so real, so inviting, so edible. I reached out to touch a grape and Helen slapped my hand. Bad boy, Ivan, don't touch. She jerked her thumb at Mac. Honey, go get a hammer and a nail, would ya? While Mac and Ivan were busy in the living room, I wandered into the kitchen. A cake covered in thick frost, chocolate frosting sat on the counter. Wow, what do you think? I love, I like cake, love it in fact. But it wasn't eating I was thinking about, it was painting. The frosting peaked and dipped like waves on a tiny pond. It looked rich and gluey, dark and smooth. It looked like, what do you think? Mud. I scooped up a handful of the frosting. I scooped up another, and I headed to the refrigerator door. It was perfect, an empty, white, waiting canvas. The frosting wasn't as easy to work with as jungle mud. It was stickier and, of course, more tempting to eat, but I kept at it, and I scraped off every last bit of frosting. I may have eaten a little cake, too. I don't remember what I was trying to paint, a banana most likely. I suppose I was going, I suppose, I suppose I knew I was going to get in trouble. At that moment, I just didn't care. I wanted to make something, anything, the way I used to. I wanted to be an artist again. <laughs> Next subtitle is called Punishment. Hmm. I soon learned that humans can screech even louder than monkeys. And after that, I was never allowed in the kitchen. Next subtitle is Babies. Back in those days, the Big Top Mall was smaller. It had a pony ride, a wooden train that bustled around the parking lot, a few bedraggled parrots, and a surly spider monkey. But when Matt bought me, a baby gorilla dressed in a crisp tuxedo to the mall, everything changed. People came from far and wide to have their pictures taken with me. They, they brought me blocks and a toy guitar, and they held me in their laps. Once, I even held a baby in mine. She was small and slippery. Bubbles flowed from her lips. She squeezed my fingers. Her rear was puffy with padding. Her legs bowed like, bowed like bent twigs. I made a face. She made a face. I grunted. She grunted. I was so afraid she would fall that I squeezed her tightly and her mother yanked her away. I wonder if my mother ever worried about dropping us. We always held on, but that's easier to do when your mother is furry. Human babies are an ugly lot, but their eyes are like other babies' eyes. Too big for their faces and for the world. The next subtitle is called Beds. 
One day, after many weeks of loud talking, Helen packed a bag and slammed the front door and never came back. I don't know why. I never know the why of humans. That night, I slept with Mac in his bed. My nests were woven of leaves and sticks and shaped like his bathtub, cool green cocoons. Mac's bed, like mine, was flat, hot, without sticks or stars. Still, he made a sleeping sound like the rumble my father used to make all when all was well. A sound from deep inside his belly. The next subtitle is called "My Place." Mac grew sullen. I grew bigger. I became what I was meant to be: too large for chairs, too strong for hugs, and too big for human life. I tried to stay calm, to move with dignity. I did my best to eat daintily, but human ways are hard to learn, especially when you're not a human. When I saw my new dom domain, I was thrilled, and who wouldn't have been? It had no furniture to break, no glasses to smash, no toilets to drop Max keys into. It even had a tire swing. I was relieved to have my own place. Somehow, I didn't realize I'd be here quite so long. Now I drink Pepsi, eat old apples, watch reruns on TV. On TV, but many days I forget what I'm supposed to be. Am I a human? Am I a gorilla? Humans have so many words, more than they truly need. Still, they have no word for what I am. So that was a cool ending to reading eleven. So we will see you next time.